All right, folks, welcome back to Roller Martin Unfiltered uh, here uh, in Los Angeles. Um, interesting story that uh, we were sent uh, dealing with Alex Villanueva, who's the L.A. County Sheriff. Okay, he's accused of supporting deputies uh, who use excessive force and violate the civil rights of residents. A federal lawsuit stemming from a December 2020 case alleges the sheriff has created an atmosphere within the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department where civil rights violations are not only approved, but also encouraged. In December, there was an incident involving Larry Jefferson, who was having a mental health episode. Christopher Chambers, his brother-in-law, uh, called for help, but no one responded. A couple of hours later is when everything unfolded. Now, before we show you this video, uh, we got to warn you, it is extremely disturbing. So if you want to look away right now, uh, we'll give you some time to do so. Um, but um, it's important that we show you this so you understand the context of the conversation that we are about to have. Go ahead and play it. Uh, joining us right now is Faisal Gill, uh, who is the attorney for Larry Jefferson and Christopher Chambers. Uh, Mr. Gill, glad to have you uh, on the show. Um, this is uh, quite uh, disturbing. And this is one of the points that uh, uh, Brianna, one of our panelists, made earlier, how law enforcement all across this country uh, does not know how to deal with individuals who are having mental health breakdowns. Well, first of all, thank you very much for uh, having me on the show and uh, airing the story. But you're absolutely right. Uh, folks, uh, law enforcement are not capable of dealing with mental health breakdown. And But I don't even think it's that. I think it's the fact that law enforcement, when they arrive at a situation and when they see a person is um, uh, you know, African-American or, or brown, they act a different way. They immediately go to uh, pulling out their guns. They immediately go to, you know, arresting the person. They immediately go to assaulting the person, and they bring them down. They act as if they are afraid. Like the video that you just showed, there were five or six officers there, and then just one person. How can they be? How can they fear for their life or be in danger from one man who was clearly unarmed? He came and ran towards them because his brother-in-law was being assaulted. There was no danger to the police officers. And, and you're absolutely right. We have shown many of these videos uh, on this show. And time after time after time, they get on, they immediately go to the black person, detain them, cuff them, toss them to the ground, and then decide to ask questions. That's exactly right. And, that's, and, and the sheriff in this case, the sheriff in Los Angeles County, has expressly created a, um, an atmosphere where that's not only uh, okay, but that's celebrated. I mean, he had, recently he went and changed the hats to cowboy hats there for the sheriff's office. So, I mean, he has this mentality that he wants his law enforcement officers to basically buy into. This is a, literally a cowboy mentality where you go there, arrest the person, you know, uh, um, uh, throw them on the ground— put your uh, knee in their necks, and then ask questions later on. In this case, what happened was when my client, Mr. Chambers, was down on the floor, on the ground there, uh, they kept his knee, their knee on his neck. And the only way they let him up is he said, uh, I don't know why he thought about this, but he said, is this how you treat the son of a police officer? And as soon as he said that, they immediately lifted him up. Now, the truth is that his father is not a police officer, but that's the only thing he could think of to say to actually save himself at that time. And I think that that's just sad. And that's very indicative of what um, is going on with the police. And your last panel that you were discussing is absolutely true. There is no accountability for police officers. And the, when there is no accountability for police officers, they can do whatever they want to do. 
Uh, Christopher Chambers, uh, he joins us right now uh, as well. And Christopher, uh, the particular point um, your attorney just made there, I mean, you, you, you said that, uh, and they literally changed 180 degrees? Yes, they did. They, 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 yes, they did. And, 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 um, and, and that had to be, they had to be shocking to you to like, oh, wow, uh, uh, what, <laughs> you know, that's, that, that's the key no, to unlock actually, uh, being beaten? Yeah, I, I, I was on the, um, I was laying on the ground and several people around me was saying, okay, pick him up, like, pick him up now. And I started saying, can you pick me up? I said, I'm not, I'm, I'm not resisting. And the reason why I'm saying not resisting because they keep saying, stop resisting. And I said, I, I said several times, even with my face, they buried my face in the dirt. So it, everything was kind of muffled, but I was like, um, I'm not resisting. I stretched my hands out for him to take my hands and put them like behind my back while I'm laying on my chest because they literally slammed me on the um, sidewalk on the pavement, slammed my chest on the pavement. And then they, um, after I stretched my hands out and they put my hands behind me and he was twisting my arm really hard. One, one guy, the guy that when I first walked out, that officer, um, the one that first tackled me, that one, he, he had his knees in my neck. He would not, he was pushing so hard on my neck. So today it's like, so today it feels like a flashback. Like, you know what I mean? Every time I think about it, I already mentioned, like I am to you right now. And the other guy has his knee, like basically in my, in my um, back, in my spine, was just like inflicting pain upon me. That's what they was doing. So I said, I said to the guy, I said, hey, I'm not resisting. I said, can you cuff me? But you can't put a cuff on. I started getting scared because what the guy was doing with my hands. And I'm like, I, I, I just feel like I couldn't trust him at that moment. So I feel like that guy, I don't want him to try to put my hands on the gun or anything and say that I'm trying to do something. Because I, I really think these guys are going to try to shoot me or something like that. That's, that's all that was going through my mind. So... I just think real quick, like, you know what I mean? Tell them that your, your dad is a police officer, you know what I mean? And they won't hurt you. And I said, you know what I mean? My, my, I said, my dad is a police officer. Were you guys trying to kill me? And, and immediately the guy picked me up. And then one of them said to me that um, you should have said that a long time ago. Now, of course, when I was on my feet, that's when I said to him, I said, so I have to tell you that for you to like, you know what I mean? Like pick me up or, you know, or try to not hurt me. You know, this is, uh, it is so unfortunate. Now, um, uh, Attorney Gill, you're, you're alleging that, that this is practice in the Sheriff's Department. Are there other examples beyond this case? Have you uh, received, uh, other people reached out to you uh, with any information? Absolutely. I have another case that we're going to file soon against the sheriff's office as well, where there was a, a black man sitting in his car eating a burrito and the sheriff's office came there and then basically said, get out of your car. He said, why? And they said, well, get out of your car and then we'll tell you. And then they re when he didn't, they reached in, grabbed him on his lapel and yanked him out there and arrested him. And for no reason. And he said, what was I doing? And they said, well, we have a, we, uh, there's a suspect in the area uh, who was robbing, uh, you know, who was committing a robbery. And he said, what are you doing? Stopping every black man to see if they committed the robbery? And they just wouldn't listen to him. And they arrested him for resisting arrest and threw him in jail for a day uh, and, and impounded his car. And, and this person uh, is not even, if he's like 110 pounds, he's too much. Absolutely no threat to the police officers. But that's how they act. That is the sheriff's attitude when they come across minorities. They don't care. They'll just arrest you. And if you don't do what they say, when they say it, you are going to get arrested and you're going to get hurt. Uh, it is, um, again, we keep seeing these things all across the country. Uh, and uh, to be perfectly honest, uh, without, have, without these lawsuits, uh, without the light being shown upon the police departments, uh, we're not going to see uh, the type of changes. And so, uh, Attorney Gill, uh, Mr. Chambers, we appreciate both of you being uh, on the show uh, to share this with us. Thank you very much for shedding a light on this very important topic. I really appreciate that. Thank you, sir. I do appreciate it. Right. Thanks a bunch. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Uh, thank you, folks. Uh, Going to go to a break. We come back uh, more on Roland Martin unfiltered, including an update on the trial of three white men uh, on trial for killing Amar Arbery. Also, we still have some things we want to show you. Dr.